I got some pants at Target for $8.98, but they need like a lot of work. Now they fit me perfectly fine, or at least like relatively fine in the waist and through the thigh, but once you get to that lower leg, it just, it looks stupid. They don't fit at all, and they're too long. I am SD, and by the end of this video, we will have taken these $9 pants and we will have made them look better than pants that cost like a hundred bucks. Now I made a video similar to this one where we had to do almost the exact same thing with the pair of jeans, but in that video we had another pair already that fit us perfectly, so we were able to take the perfect pair of pants, put them on top of the new pair of pants, and just transfer all those measurements over. Well this time we don't have that luxury, but uh... That's okay, because that just means we have to spend an extra, like, five minutes measuring. Now the only things that we need for this are some sewing pins, we need a measuring tape, and make sure that you actually use a fabric measuring tape, and you need some grit and determination and will to do it. Actually, no, you don't, you don't need that. But you do need a sewing machine. Um, ask your grandma, ask your neighbor, better yet, go on eBay. Do you have any idea how many people are just trying to get rid of their sewing machines because they don't know how to use it? And if all else fails, there's a solid one in the link down in the description. Now, I chose these pants for a very, very specific reason, aside from the fact that they were super cheap. I chose these because tapering and slimming these pants is going to be exactly like tapering and slimming a pair of dress pants, like to a T. Like, there's really no difference at all. The only differences that you're going to run into are the type of needle that you're gonna use, the type of thread that you're gonna use, and the biggest difference you're gonna run into is the fact that the crease that's gonna be in the middle of your pants, it's gonna shift either to the left or to the right once you taper them, uh, because you took some fabric off of one side, so now it's not center anymore. But the easiest way, the easiest way to remedy that, and I do this all the time, is just take them to a dry cleaner, spend three bucks and just have them clean them and re-iron them, re-iron that crease on there. It's their problem, not yours. So yes, these pants are a cotton twill polyester blend, but if you have some wool dress pants or if you have some cotton polyester blend dress pants and you wanna taper those too, have at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shorten these bad boys too because they are way too long, so just stick around for that. And we are putting a taper on the inside seam of these pants. Hands. We are not putting it on the outside. Putting it on the outside is definitely an option, but the problem that you're gonna run into is when you put it on the outside, you're gonna sew right through that pocket, and when you go to kind of taper that new stitch out and kind of have it fan out that way towards the edge, it's gonna have like a little dimple in the side, and it looks stupid. Trust me, I know, I've done it countless times. So aside from the fact that sewing the outside seam looks kind of dumb in the end, doing the inside seam is a thousand times easier. Okay, so we have our pants inside out and I went ahead and I already put the pins in on where I want my measurements to be and boy, let me tell you, I've never ever ever had to be so aggressive with a pair of pants before. I mean, usually I'll take off a quarter of an inch I'll take off three quarters of an inch. No, not on these. Holy crap, I had to take off, I'm taking off two inches down here by the ankle. I'm starting out at a half of an inch and I'm ending at two, that's insane. Now the reason why I have my measuring tape here is because I needed to know exactly where it is that my knee is on these pants because that's where I'm gonna have my taper start. And on these pans, it's actually at 21 and a half inches. So that right there, that pin is where I'm gonna start my taper at. And this pin down here, this pin is measured in to a half of an inch. So between these two pins, I'm gonna start out right here. I'm not starting my seam up at the crotch seam. I'm starting it down here and I'm gonna just taper it in ever so gently until I get down to here and then I'm at a half of an inch. The reason why I did it the way that I did it is because if this angle is too sharp up here, if you come in too strongly, you're gonna flip the pants right side in and you're just gonna see a giant dimple right there and it's gonna look dumb. So you're gonna wanna make sure you just do this as gradually as possible. I might even start up here 
and just kind of ease on into it until I'm half of an inch right here. Now, as we go along, this pin right down here, this pin is one inch. And again, like we said down here, this pin is two inches. Long story short, you just need three pins, maybe four. This is gonna give you a taper. That is the line that we're sewing along. And as a quick heads up, what you were gonna notice is this is the inside seam right here. I've got it all pressed down nicely against the ground so it's nice and flat. You can't see it, but you'll notice that there will kind of be some bunching fabric over back this way. This is my other edge. And so you look at it, you're like, wait, wait, why isn't it even? Well, the reason for that is because you have more fabric on the back of your pants than you do the front of your pants. And the reason for that is because this is where your calf muscle is. So yeah, you need, you need more fabric and more space for that than you do your shins up here. And when you go to actually sew this, you want your pins to be facing the right direction. When I put this in my sewing machine, my sewing machine is gonna be right here on this side. So it's just gonna go over my, the edge of my garment, just just like that. Now I wanna have, I put them in the wrong way, check that out. I wanna have my pins facing this way with the pointy part facing that direction because as my machine goes along like this, I'll be able to just reach in and pull my pin down to pull it out. If you have it the other way, it's totally okay. Not a big deal at all. You're not gonna ruin anything. It's just kind of annoying and it's just a lot easier the other way. Not the end of the world, but annoying. Now this, this right here, this is one of the most important parts of the entire process. And it's what I call the flex test. Don't just stand there with the pins in your pants like a zombie all like, oh yeah. These fit great. No, it doesn't work that way. You gotta move and bend and stretch and sit down and stand up and that, that will actually show you as to whether or not you got those measurements right. Those pins might feel great when you're standing there, but then what are you gonna do when you sit down and you realize you got camel toe? Trust me, avoid the toe. I wish I would have known that. Got a hack for you. Do you wanna make sure that those sewing pins don't stab you in the legs when you're putting your pants on and when you're taking them off? You can, uh, you can actually use some safety pins instead. And safety pins are great because they're not going to come out on you, they're not going to stab you, and they're still going to give you a really good idea of what that finished product is gonna look like and what it's gonna feel like. But just make sure that you replace those safety pins with sewing pins afterwards because bro, it is impossible to remove safety pins when you are running those pans underneath the sewing machine. Oh man, I'm tired of changing my shirt. And now it is time for the ridiculously easy part, which is ironic because everybody thinks this is the hardest part, but no, it's the easiest part. What, uh, what kind of thread are we gonna use? Polyester, why? Because polyester thread stretches unlike cotton thread and we want to make sure that our seam is nice and strong so we don't have any awkward, embarrassing moments later on. And what kind of needle are we gonna use? Um, a universal needle 80-12. Why? Because these pants aren't too thick, so a universal needle 80-12 will be able to penetrate them relatively fine, whereas if they were even just a little bit thicker, we might need to upgrade to a specialty needle like a denim needle, or if you need some numbers, 100-16. What kind of stitch are we using and what length? Straight stitch at around two to about two and a half. Why? Mm, oh, I know, uh, because that length is gonna make sure that our stitches are close enough together so that they're strong, but they're not so close together that it takes like 45 minutes to run these pants through that sewing machine. Good. You've been listening. Yeah, if all of that seems confusing to you, there's a whole bunch of videos where I talk about all of that in the description, in depth. Go check it out. Now we've got our machine set up with the proper settings, with the proper stitch and the proper stitch length. And we also made sure to check our bobbin down below down there because nothing sucks more than realizing you ran out of thread in that bobbin in like the middle of it. Now we are just going to sew a new stitch along that predetermined line that we made either with our pins 
Or if you decided to skip that step and you just wanted to draw some lines with a fabric marker on your pants, you could do that too. By the way, do you, uh, do you remember how I told you that I got these pants at Target on clearance for $9? Well, I made an entire video explaining the clearance process to you and how you can know when things are going to go on clearance. I'd put it in a card, but I always point to the wrong side when I do that. I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna use my left hand. Either this is the right side or it's not. Now, once we are done sewing that new straight stitch, we cut off the extra fabric, leaving 5 eighths of an inch which is in between half of an inch and three quarters of an inch. And that right there, that is what's gonna be called our seam allowance. And what we will do with that seam allowance is we will put an optional zigzag stitch on there so that we can make sure that our fabric doesn't just get all frayed and just get all on the inside of your washing machine. I've done it. And I say optional because some people really don't like how it feels depending on how you do this zigzag stitch. If you make it properly, it's not bad at all. If you make it improperly, yeah, it's not that fun. So what you can do instead is you can actually just use some pinking shears. And what pinking shears are, are those, are those scissors that you see that just cut in a zigzag. I don't have any though, otherwise, I'd show you. If, uh, so if you're wondering why I haven't showed you how to shorten them yet, well, that's cause my daughter gets out of school at 2.30 and it's 2.15, so I gotta, I gotta go get her. But don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. We're gonna do that in another video. Just, just stay tuned. That zigzag stitch is done. You just tapered your own pants and uh, have fun holding back on the temptation to now tailor every single thing you have in your closet. Good luck. SD out, deuces!